up. The human mind as we know it is a powerful tool and the horrific visuals that one may encounter are nothing but mere projections from the brain. But what makes this interesting is many people claim to experience similar haunting events. Different cultures even have entities with the same attributes but different names in their language. From an unknown presence roaming around your room to the feeling of being choked while you're sleeping, let's look at some of the scary sh** encountered during sleep paralysis. The earliest account of sleep paralysis dates back to the first century from Roman poet Horace. When doomed to death, I will attend to you as a nocturnal fury. I will attack your faces and brooding upon your restless breasts, I will deprive of repose by terror. In ancient Mesopotamia and Rome, stories of a demon that roamed around at night bringing nightmares were common. The demon's name? Incubus, originating from the Latin word incubare, which means to sit on. Incubus is a male demon from folklore that was believed to be responsible for bringing nightmares. While in the state of sleep paralysis, it is common to panic as the brain switches to survival mode. A malevolent spirit can be felt in the room and once he gets close enough, Incubus sits on the chest of the victim and begins to choke them, inducing horrifying dreams. Most who have experienced this hallucination feel pressure on their chests, sometimes a choking sensation on their necks, and if they manage to open their eyes during the sleep paralysis episode, they can see the demon right in their face. Incubus and the female counterpart Succubus are also known as sex demons who aggressively have sex with victims as they sleep. This is known as Incubus Syndrome. The delusion of being sexually approached by an unforeseen person at night is more common in those with erotomania and schizophrenic love delusions, while those who encounter incubus during sleep paralysis report feelings of unease, tension, and nightmares. In later years, this common occurrence that was characterized by the feeling of an entity exerting pressure on one's thorax was given the term incubus phenomenon. This phenomenon of a malignant entity that paralyzes its targets while they sleep, lays on their chest and brings bad dreams is widely known with different cultures having their own version. The most widely known variation of Incubus is the Old Hag. To understand this better, let's take a look into the history of witches. In ancient times, with growing superstitions and spiritual beliefs, placing the blame on outcasts every time a negative event occurred became the norm. Old people, men and women alike, were highly respected in society, and in the early 16th century, the term hag was used to simply refer to an old person. As the witch mass hysteria grew, more and more old women were accused of being witches, seeing as they were an easy target to attack. Eventually, the word hag became old hag and was used to refer to all the ugly women who are believed to be witches. Those who have hallucinations of the old hag often see a womanly figure in a hood who sometimes stands beside the bed staring at them and other times goes full incubus mode, sits on their chest and chokes them. The old hag and incubus show up in many different stories. In parts of Brazil, folklore tells of Pisadeira, a creature with long fingernails that lurks on people's rooftops at night, then comes into a person's house and tramples on the chests of those who sleep. In Catalonia, there's the legend of La Pesante, a large black dog, or sometimes a cat, that goes into people's houses at night, sits on their chests, making it hard to breathe and causing nightmares. The Mara from Scandinavian folklore is a sleep demon that often took the form of a woman. She visited men and rode their chests while they slept till they couldn't breathe, resulting in nightmares and paralysis. The Mara would sometimes leave marks on the victims and they would wake up sweating with the fever. Incubus and the old hag are the most encountered entities during sleep paralysis, but these other beings that people have reported having similar experiences with and this brings us to my own personal story. Like many other children, 
I frequently used to get nightmares and sleep paralysis. This one particular night, I had gone to sleep as usual but began falling into an episode of sleep paralysis. By this point, I had experienced it so many times and I just calmly lay there waiting for the episode to subside on its own. As the paralysis faded away, I managed to turn my head to the side facing the direction of my window which I had left wide open. I managed to open my eyes and underneath my curtain that was dancing in the breeze there he was the man in the hat he was facing sideways looking outside of the window so i wasn't really scared but it was a very weird experience i only saw him for a few seconds and eventually i was able to wake up and go back to sleep years ago there was a rising number of healthy people dying in their sleep and that's when the myth of the man in the hat came to be many people told stories of seeing a similar figure and in 1984, he even became the antagonist of the horror cult classic, The Nightmare on Elm Street. Freddy Krueger is a clawed figure who murders his victims in their dreams, and it was believed that those who died in their sleep saw the hat man before their unfortunate fate. Some even say that just the simple mention of his name will invite him to your dreams tonight. Another common hallucination is sensing the presence of an intruder who often manifests as a shadow person. A shadow person is a spirit believed to manifest itself in the shadow of a humanoid figure, terrorizing humans while they sleep. This next one is the most interesting hallucination. While experiencing a sleep paralysis episode, sometimes a sense of levitation can be felt with a body floating above the bed. Just like the intruder, the presence of entities in the room can be felt. Next comes flashing lights and a buzzing sound, then creeping out of the shadows to capture and abduct the target. Aliens The hairless, grey, big-eyed creatures approach their victims and insert instruments into their nostrils and other parts of their body. Sometimes, they even have intercourse with them. The topic of extraterrestrial life goes deep, but there's been a correlation observed from the many accounts on alien abductions given that show it could all just possibly be a hallucination had during sleep paralysis. 